above, we have two main types of rock. We have the sedimentary rocks that are all around the tower and the rock of the tower itself. This is our beautiful rock from the tower. It's called Phonolite. Phone o light. A lot of people, when they look at it, they think it looks a lot like granite, and it is kind of a cousin of granite, but it doesn't have any quartz crystals. And to be granite, you have to have quartz crystals. All these shiny white crystals are actually feldspar. In between, you can see some tiny black crystals, and also a whole bunch of gray area. Both the black crystals and the gray area are rich in iron, and as they rust, they give the tower its color. There have been three accepted theories around for quite a while. One is called a stock, and that would be just a big blob of rock that kind of stopped underground, was about the shape of the tower is now, but somewhat bigger. Uh, and that would be, as I said, called a stock. The next theory is that it came up and it found a weak layer still well underground and moved out into that layer and kind of blew up a little bit until it became a mushroom shaped uh, big hunk of old rock that uh, geologists would call a lacolith. The third theory is that it came up and then above the tower there would have been a pipe that goes all the way to the surface. And remember, the surface at this time could have been as much as a mile and a half above. Up there, you would have had eruptions and the big cone and all that kind of stuff. But that is not where the tower was. The tower was down in the plumbing. And that would be called a volcanic plug. New theory has come out, and that involves groundwater. The idea is that when the hot molten magma came up, it would find water underground, which happens a lot. When this hot molten rock hit that water, it formed a huge amount of steam, which exploded a big pipe and a crater on the surface. And then after things calmed down a bit, the rest of that molten rock came up from below, up that pipe that was made weak by the explosion, and pooled in the bottom of the crater. So in this theory, the rock would be on the surface right from the beginning. However, it would be at the bottom of a big crater, so not at the, the land surface. You have noticed in pictures of the, the tower that it has columns. How did those columns get created? Well, that was part of the cooling process. When you have a big mass of molten rock, it starts to cool from the surface. And on that surface, it will start creating a crack pattern. Molten rock occupies more space than solid rock does, so it has to shrink. And you can imagine that if you have a huge piece of molten rock and you start to cool it, everything's going to start to shrink from everything else and you're going to develop a crack pattern. You may notice that uh, we have a boulder field and that's from pieces of the rock that have fallen off through the millennia. We do lose a couple of boulders a year, they tell us. They bring them down when there's no one around to get hurt by them. But the last time a full column has fallen, they say, is maybe 10,000 years ago. A lot of folks want to know what's on top. The top is fairly flat, a little bit domed from the center, and through the years it's developed some soil and it actually has plants growing up there. Grass is the most common thing, but you also have things like cactus and sagebrush and gooseberries. And not only do you have plants, you also have animals. There's a whole bunch of small rodents like chipmunks and mice and wood rats. And whenever you have a, a banquet like that, you have something that likes to eat it, so we have snakes up there as well. And of course, the birds and the bugs.